What's up, guys? I'm Alex. I'm Drew. We're the Chainsmokers. We're going to show you how we made our song, Roses. Pretty pumped about it. Uh, so what, the song came out seven months ago now, uh, oh, right, right. in June, uh, and to us, the song is probably the most important song we've ever put out so far, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, to this point. Uh, wow, where do we even begin? I guess where we started and found Roses and yeah. started with the vocal and all that stuff. So um, basically, Drew and I we came up on Hype Machine, it's this blog aggregator on the internet that shout a lot of, like, shout out the Hype Machine, a lot of like great indie artists and a lot of songs kind of start there. Um, a lot of huge pop songs nowadays like all start on Hype Machine. So basically we always are on there looking for new songs. Uh, and Roses, the singer, had this track called Limelight on Hype Machine that we were big fans of. She has a really unique voice and the song felt really cool. Um, so we usually what we do is just make a list of all these singers that we wanted to hit up and uh, she was on there, and Drew would make these demo sketch ideas that essentially were like half-finished tracks or even less than that, kind of just melodies and really stripped down things that kind of let people do and go wherever they wanted. And I would send them out to these different singers that we were uh, interested in, and she was really cool and nice, and she was super pumped um, to work on some stuff. So we sent her, I think it was actually our track Waterbed, yeah. a stripped down version of what yeah. became Waterbed. Yeah. And, uh, and she was working on it. And, and basically what I do every like three weeks is I check back in and I say like, hey, do you have anything? What's <laughs> going on? Da, da, da. I'm really annoying about it, uh, but it's like kind of what we do. It's the good one-two punch. Uh, and she was like, listen, I have some stuff written for it, but I think it'd be a lot better if we got in the studio together um, and did something. She was from Philadelphia and we're in New York. Not anymore, LA based now, but we were New York based. And she came up to Drew's apartment, which is where we produced everything thus far yeah. that's been released. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's just crazy. Pretty actually, wild. About, yeah. Which is really no bigger than this room that we're in now. Certainly yeah. not as nice huh. from a sound standpoint. Well, my apartment was kind of yeah. nice <laughs> in New York. The uh, old one wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Which was where we made every other track, essentially. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, and then she came over, and uh, I remember uh, she was super, you know, super nice girl, super into it. She had some lyrics that she'd written. And I ca uh, we w she came over, I came over, and Drew was like, I actually have something totally different yeah. uh, uh, that we're pumped about. And um, the song came together, and b not finished, but like six hours was about the time it took to yeah. come up with the full thought. What's really cool about this song is the whole thing came together in one session, except for one little vocal glitch part, which I'll show you guys at the end. Like everything happened in like an eight hour studio session from writing the vocals to recording the vocals to making the entire beat. Well, Roses came with some and I came with some. So yeah, might as well just get into it. Um, when I started the beat, I think I made this beat on an airplane um, and I took this cool sound in silence. Let's try to break it down. And I found like this airy synth lead. Super simple. It's just. That's all it is. Just those like two notes. But I wanted to give it some energy. So basically, this is kind of the stuff I threw on it. Um, this plugin's called Kickstart. It's basically just like a sidechain plugin. Um, it's made by Cable Guys. Nicky Romero did like a collab with them. Um, uh, Cable Guys is, are awesome. Like if you're really into like getting a sidechain plugin, I'd recommend uh, using LFO Tool, which they also make, um, which is more comprehensive. Um, I like I'm kind of a plugin fiend, so I, I like try and buy everything that comes out and. I think I just bought Nicky Romero, and it's a really basic plugin. But I just started working out, uh, working with it, and um, it's what I use for the majority of the side chain on this entire track. So you can hear it; it's doing an eighth note side chain, so which gives it that pumping feel. So it's just. And then the Ableton multi compression is probably like one of my biggest, like things that I use, uh, just to. Basically, just smooths everything out, compresses it, um, and just tightens up every sound. So I'll, I'll do that early on in like uh, the producing process because it gives you a better idea about like how much space you have to work with. 
um, and uh, you know, really like tightens up your sound early on, so you can make better choices about what other sounds you decide to put in your song. So here's a little simple EQ that really just cuts out the rest of the low end. Um, this auto filters on for when I, you know, I usually transition out of sounds by pulling out all the low frequencies or pulling down all the high ones. Um, so all together, that becomes. As you can hear, just the multiband compression just brings like makes it more present in the mix. Oops. Um, and so as does this EQ right here. Um, so without Rose's vocals, I guess it started like just that. Oops, it's on the nose. And then I had basically, oh, I guess we can go to drums then because the beginning is really just that sound um, with a pretty simple drum pattern. Um, so after years of producing, you usually come up with your own little like sample packs. And I had just made this drum kit. Um, it's kind of like a poppy, uh, hip hop trap type um, of drum kit. It's pretty simple. Um, they're all on one pad, but obviously for mixing purposes, I separated, you know, my kick, uh, my like kick pattern from my uh, snaps and, and clap pattern. Um, but the whole rack that I made is, oops. So the main sounds you hear obviously are the kick, which is some kick sample that I found um, a while ago. And this is the one that I, yeah, I can't remember what pack that's from, but I think I threw some reverb on that just to give it that big airy feel. Um, I love like, uh, more like concert type drums, like big war drums, timbales, like that kind of orchestral type of uh, sound. And that's- Jersey, Jersey Club. That's not from, I don't yeah. think that's from Jersey yeah. Club, yeah. but Jersey Club's a really dope like, yeah. pack of samples. I don't even know if that's like, I can't remember where I got that. Yeah, it's I remember you make, telling you to make a note of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then snaps, um, what I do with a lot of snaps, these are the ones that I've made. Those are the two primary ones that are in this. Um, what I do with a lot of my drum samples um, is I throw uh, guitar amp plugins on. I love the Chris Lord Alge um, from the Waves uh, collection. Um, and I'll just throw, I, I did it on accident one time, but I just threw the like basic in a preset, just like completely like full reset or whatever on top of a drum sample. And cause it has like a reverb delay, compression, uh, treble, um, and like bass thing on there. It just kind of tightened it up and gave it like a really cool spread throughout the track. So I ended up going through a lot of my favorite drum samples and throwing that all um, on every different sound individually. Um, and it gives me like really crispy, tight samples. Um, so I'll, I'll show you more of that plugin because I use it again on this track somewhere else. But um, just know that like all these sounds are, you know, they come from pretty, uh, like really good sample packs, but like mine are extra crispy because I've done that kind of processing on them. Um, the kick pattern's really simple. So that's just. That's pretty basic. Um, you can just play that obviously quantize that nicely in Ableton. Um, so it's like perfectly on beat. Um, I always add things. Um, I always add little like subtle, like uh, usually like vocal effects or weird sounds that kind of um, build on the space uh, of the spacing of the song. Um, they're things that like probably the average person won't ever hear, but it will have this uh, vibe for it and a certain vibe uh, that like people will definitely feel. Um, and you can hear that. Let's see these vocal samples that I have in here. Like. And then I have weird things. Weird little things that you wouldn't ever ever hear, but here to sample it be. <laughs> like all like little <laughs> dope things that kind of keep the beat going. You know? Um, so. 
I'll, I have those out throughout the songs. I know the most noticeable one is during the drop, it goes, what? What? Which is kind of like a classic, kind of corny hip hop sample, but um, I thought that was kind of funny. I like mixing all these different types of uh, like multi genre elements, and like that was super pop, and I didn't feel like this song was too pop, so I thought it was kind of like a cool contrast. Um, but more about that later. Um, the only other thing that happens in this part of the song, which I don't even think I had by the time we, before the session, was this bass. Yeah, that's the Moog, right? Yeah. So I have a, a Moog sub fatty, which isn't here today, um, which is really one of the first like analog synths that we decided to buy. Um, and <laughs> everything like, has that Guitar Center guy called us back yet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> guitar Center is so funny. You like roll up from advice, and they like get your email and send you music. You're like, jeez. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, oh yeah, I had some technical difficulties, and I called him, and he just went radio. He's like, I got you anything. Yeah. He just went de radio. <laughs> Fuck you, Guitar Center guy. <laughs> anyway, um, this sounds pretty simple. Um, yeah, I take all this stuff off of it, but. Really simple um, pattern, obviously. Um, the thing about like the Moog analog synthesizers is like you you don't really understand how much better they are than what comes in the box until you get one, and it's just you have such a much uh, such a stronger uh, you know signal to play with. Um, so even when I throw this processing on it, you just feel it. It's deeper. It hits harder. Um, I cut out some of the low end and it still feels like that. So here's my basic ass uh, Ableton EQ. I put a little bit of this Redux on it just to give it that buzz. So that gives it that that uh, added bit crush type sound. Um, and I just added that for like presence. Um, I'll do that a lot. Like if something's in there but it's not sticking out of the mix, I'll add this sound that you don't even realize is really there, but you can hear the sound better in the mix. Um, that's what I also do with the multi-band compression, why I throw that on specific sounds. Um, so all together, with all my weird vocal effects, the bass and the wavy synths and my drums is... <laughs> now I'm hearing something else that I forgot to tell you about. Um, so um, there's this uh, cool... Uh, I think it's called the Hollywood Drums thing that I, I bought from uh, uh, REFX Nexus. Um, Nexus is a six synth. Um, I don't use it much in this song, but I do use it a lot. It's really presetted, so there's not a lot of tweaking that you can do with it, but they have really nice piano sounds, they have really nice string sounds. Um, if you're doing pop music, I'd recommend that. If you're doing more, um, looking for more of an organic, uh, less like synth strings type sound, I'd go with one of the contact players but anyway um, they I happen to find a really cool uh, hall they call it Hollywood drums um, preset pack which I highly recommend because it has a lot of really crispy um, orchestral drum sounds um, and I found this I called it war drum which is kind of what it sounds like like something from Braveheart but it kind of adds to the let's see, like a big open uh, bass drum that you'd hit with like a wooden mallet or something and that kind of adds to the just like the the spatial the spatialness of uh, of the drum so so it like, takes it from being more of like a i think that and the vocal um kind of oohs and ahs and woos and whatever take it from being like a sterile type like a pop beat to making it something cool and vibey and um you know, that with the wavy synth is what really kind of create the energy in this section of the song. Um, so I guess I'll get into the vocals um, of this part. The biggest blessing about this song is Roses has an insane voice and I suck at producing vocals. Um, and thank God for this track. I mean, I got better at now, but at the time I was pretty awful. Um, Thank God her, she like would sing like perfectly on key. I, I don't even think I melodined the majority of it. Um, for those of you who don't know, Melodyne's a, um, basically a tuning software which you can use for anything, but it's most typically used for uh, vocals. Um, and I put like very basic reverb on her voice. Her voice is just super strong and perfect. And I think 
because of that too, that it wasn't over processed, it makes it feel super authentic as well. Yeah, um, I was in the middle of the living room. Yeah, oh with yeah. The AC we were blowing. Yeah, we recorded <laughs> all these vocals, no vocal booth, um, with my Telefunken mic and like, what do you call those shield things? Yeah. And uh, yeah, with the middle that of my New it. York City apartment, luckily it was high up in a building. I had to like, there's like the vents that you can't, because like, you know, you get like flu diseases in apartments if you don't have a proper ventilation. So yeah. we had to like hold the towel. Like over the so it wasn't that was like blown, <laughs> yeah, and it just went for it. Yeah, it was great. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, like, you, you typically we try to get a cleaner audio recording, but it's really cool that we made this track so like almost bootleg in a way. Yeah, and it's gone as far as it's gone. And I think that's like something that's important to keep in mind when you're writing and producing is that sometimes when things aren't perfect um, and things are sloppy and whatever it. It makes it makes your track more authentic, almost, mm -hmm. you know, because it adds some kind of like y you don't even consciously realize what the sound is. You just it has a certain vibe to it, a certain air about it. I heard this. I saw like Dead Mouse way back in the day. Like he said, some I'm pretty sure it was Dead Mouse said that he goes like on the roof of his apartment building and records just noise, and that's really like low underneath all of his music, mm -hmm. or at the time. Yeah. Um, and which I think is a really cool idea because it's the same type of concept. You've added some uh, real, real world sound to your, um, to your production, which, you know, it's in a computer. These are a lot of synthetic instruments, and even the ones that are live, like strings and, and whatever, they're a computer string synthesizer. synthesizer. So um, doing stuff like that, and whenever you can record at live elements, I highly recommend because, you know, it will add so much depth to your productions. Um, so anyway, um, back to Rose's vocals. Um, Take it slow, but it's not typical. Voice is amazing. So here's that Chris Lord Alge vocal plugin that I was using. There's n I didn't use any of the presets. I just threw it on, and it just just because like it has like I said, bass, treble, compress, reverb, delay, pitch. Just like the, uh, you know, all those settings at zero, um, not like pushing any of them, really just tightens up the vocal. And like, I think I would be ruining her voice if I really pushed it further. I'm sure I like messed around with some of it and landed back on just that. Um, I've cut out the low end to about, uh, yeah, 167 hertz, because that's like the, the point where I felt like, hey, I'll try to cut out anything that doesn't need to be there. Um, and I felt like anything below that, there was no, you couldn't hear it. So, um, Take it slow, but it's not typical. So you're not he hearing this part anyway, so why the hell would you let it take up space in your, in your song? His heart so. was a stone, but then this reverb's on here. This is an Ableton reverb. Um, everyone says it's a bad reverb. I use it all the time. But um, uh, I just use it here, basically, when I was talking about sweeping out certain sound elements in the song. I'll also like reverb them out. So let's see where I've used this. Um, yeah, so it looks like right when I go into the next part of the song. Let me go. So it kind of the throw on that kind of makes it uh, makes a nice easy transition to the next part of the song. Let me go. Um, because I didn't want a super open reverb throughout the whole her whole verse, but I did want to kind of throw it as it went into the next part part of the song to help the transition. Um, that's where you started writing. Yep, and then, so, this is the part of the vocals that I wrote. I was, we were talking about earlier, we were listening to a lot of group love, and I love how there's this uh, um, kind of like dual vocal thing that the male vocalist and the female vocalist do together. Um, and when you add like a male and female voice together, it gives like the whole song a different kind of like space and energy. And I felt like the whole verse was like kind of riding this high and I wanted to really spread out. So that's where I really added like a full bass, my vocal, and I added uh, acoustic guitar um, just to basically widen that, this, this part of the song. Um, so to break that down, we'll start with the vocals. Um, Here's the vocal bridge. Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Take me back to a time only we knew how to wait. So we'll start with this, the actual audio of it. So it's the same processing I did on her voice. Um, Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Take me back to a time only we knew how to act. 
that again I'm using. Actually, I probably did something different here. Yeah, so there's a little bit more. It's basically the same basic Chris Lodalge uh, vocal plugin thing. Um, but I've added a little bit more reverb and delay, not much. Um, there's also a compressor on there. And this is, this is on like the full group, I believe. Um, I threw a compressor on there because I want the, the CLA 3A um, compressor because I wanted to glue her vocals and my vocals together. Um, but I don't think hers needed them alone, so that's why they're not on the previous part of the song. Um, so, you guys ready to hear my shitty voice? Um, her Deep voice sounds... In my bones, I can feel you. Take me back to a time. Great as always. So, I just basically <laughs> have... I just took two takes of her singing this part. Um, as you can see, they're different. Um, just I did a double, um, just to give her voice uh, a little bit more depth. And then I just did a light, my vocal super light didn't tune them at all, which I think is really cool because it makes it sloppy, again, adds to the authenticity of the track. So you'll hear. Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Take me back to a time when we knew how to wait. Pretty nice, right? I think you're a better singer into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deep in my bones. And then I, I did a double and just panned it to the other side. So it's pretty simple, this part. Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Take me back to a time when we knew how to wait. So that's cool, and it also adds to like the lyrical content of the song in that part. You know, like "Roses" is about you know catching a vibe with someone, and I really wanted to write something that was uh, very vivid and have you like look very vivid image of like you know a, a certain time when of being like in love with someone, um, and that's like you know watching a movie and smoking weed, uh, just like kind of like really bring those moments to the forefront of the song. So. That's where the whole inspiration for this part of the track came. Um, the vocal glitch is really simple. I took just an instrument rack. I usually use Sampler in Ableton, but again, we did this all in eight hours and we were just ripping through this thing. Um, that's why my session's also insanely unorganized. I, I mean, think it literally like, started too with beginning to end. Like, yeah, it, it really did. Yeah, yeah. It like started with beat and then we just progressed and built the thing out like that. Um, so this is just... So that I just took, um, basically, um, let's see, let's just double it so we can see what part of the song this is from. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, all right, so what I do often, so I thought, um, what I'll do often is after we record a vocal, I'll have the vocalist go and just sing ad-libs, because I want to take samples from their vocals to just sprinkle out throughout the song. Um, cause you can do a lot of cool glitchy things in Ableton like this. Um, so I took basically just her voice and put it in a sampler so you can go. So I do that with her voice and I did one with my voice too. Um, and I threw uh, a simple delay. This is a way to just basically split the audio signal to like hard pan both ways without having to make two tracks into it. Um, so you just basically throw on a simple delay and um, this is in Ableton. You can do it with any delay as long as uh, both the delay times are set ex ex extremely quickly. So as you can see, this is all the way down to one millisecond and this one's, you know, to the human ear, unnoticeably, uh, longer uh, at 12.7 milliseconds. You'll start to notice around like 40 or 50 when there's actually like a delay happening. Um, but uh, so that's how I do all that vocal shiznit. Back to a time only we knew how to wait. We could waste a night with an old film, smoke a little weed on the couch in the back room, how to wait. This is every fat boy's favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> we get Snapchats all the time. <laughs> Dude's doing that. <laughs> so as you can see here, I did just, yeah. Um, so I just basically elaborated on that part. I added a synth that's doing the same thing because I didn't feel like it was prominent enough with just the vocals doing it. So that is, no, that's another war drum. Let's 
I think I used Spire. Yeah, I did use Spire. I can hear it. Spire is another great synth. As far as soft synths go, Spire is one of the best sounding ones. Spire and Serum are my two favorites. However, I still use a lot of Silent and Massive. Um, where the hell is that? I can hear it. Maybe it's in that vocal thing. Like I said, this is super unorganized because of how quickly we made the track. Oh, here it is. Um, so that just... So that just mimics um, the vocal chop. Just gives it more space and like pulls out that actual sound in the mix. Um, um, so what else do I have going on in this section? Um, outside of the vocals, I just made this bass and reactor. Um, react. Uh, Reactor is a native instruments plugin. They have this plugin uh, within. Reactor is a player, um, but there's this uh, patch in between uh, in, that you can buy for inside of it called Razor, which is awesome. Um, they have this rip it up preset, which if you've put a filter on it, has this really dope wide bass sound. That's not actually what's in the song. Um, what actually is like it's doing this pattern. Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Um, Basically, I, I use bass a lot um, to open up the song a lot of times. I'll start a lot of my records with no bass in them because when it comes in, it really pulls the whole song together and makes it sound wider by adding that low layer. Um, in the actual version, which as you can see here, the sample didn't load for some reason, um, probably because I'm super disorganized and didn't save it in the right place, but I used the Moog for this as well. And I used this same sound. This. I used that sound, just held it, and I messed around with the filter and turned it up so it kind of opened up. So I, I remade this with uh, Reactor just to show you guys like what the bass was doing. Um, and so I still have that, those waves going on just to carry on the vibe. And then I have a guitar. Um, a lot of our best songs are written right after we buy a new instrument. We bought a Taylor guitar and we're just like dying to use it. And I like, I remember saying after I recorded these, I was like, don't worry, I'll record them again because yeah. I did such a shitty job. And now, and then like, you're just like, fuck it, they're just in the song it's now. Nice and, um, and you can't tell when everything's mixed in, but they're pretty bad. You know, so, um, so that's pretty, that's all it is. Basically, I recorded myself playing that, um, you know, uh, a bunch of times, and then I like made sure they were. I, I took two takes of it, and then hard panned them either, both left and right to give it that super wide feel. Um, and I did that because actually Mike Eisinger, who uh, wrote "Wake Me Up" with Avicii, told me that he did the. That's how he did the guitars. He recorded it like four times and then hard panned them oh, yeah, yeah. either way. And so I, I had that in my mind. I was like, oh, I want to. Obviously, Wake Me Up is a pretty good song, so I was definitely trying to snap, yeah. snap some techniques from I, that. I feel like every time we do something too, it's funny because like with that, we were like, oh, should we set up the mic stand in front, or how many mics <laughs> do we need to record? You know what I mean? And then it just ends up being like, well, this is what we got, and yeah. this is what we know. We got to do this quickly. Yeah, and it ends up kind working. of working out. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's pretty simple processing on that too. This SSL, uh, SSL channel. Um, just the acoustic guitar preset, not gonna lie, nothing fancy going on here. Um, basically that just tightens it up, adds presence, um, basically what I use compression for all the time on all my tracks. Um, uh, again, EQ'd out the low end because you really don't need that here. Some filth going on down there that doesn't need to be in there, so that's just EQ'd out simply with the, uh, Ableton EQs. People shit on the a Ableton EQs sometimes, uh, and there are way better EQs, but in terms of uh, not killing your CPU if you're trying to work quickly, which is how we like to work, um, they usually are my go-to, just because they don't weigh the computer down. Um, now I'm like, you know, we've started bouncing a lot of shit to audio, just because like, you're literally right before this, like it crashed, you know, and there's not even that much stuff going on in this song. Um, so, um, but I gotta say, up until this point, Ableton's plugins have done right by us, you know? Um, so that's pretty much this whole part. So, and this is probably the part everyone wants to know about, how we did the drop. 
So we're all about like dynamics um, and basically we cut everything out just for that vocal chop that I was talking about before is. And that that snaps just from uh, that set of drum samples that I was talking about earlier. It's, oops, not there. And then the, the drum pattern I do during the drop is the same. I just turned up the uh, velocity on the kick so it hits harder. The same sound just hits uh, way harder. Um, and I added, I don't know, maybe I didn't, did do this in the verse. Yeah, so that snap is the, yeah, it's, just, it's the same exact snap pattern as before. Um, which is cool when you find something that works for like two parts of a song and you don't have to put a ton of layers on. Um, we're all about simplicity. Um, when we, like, side note about simplicity. When we started producing, uh, I feel like we would like listen to all this shit and it would sound so big and loud and we thought that that meant stacking sounds on top of sounds. Little did we know that would just make our mixing troubles far greater because there's too much shit going on and like the really good sounds don't have the space they need to really break through when you do your final mix and you master it and, and try to make it nice and loud because it is dance music after, after all. Um, so we try to be super minimal. We don't put ch sounds into our songs that don't need to be there. Um, and if there's something that isn't wide enough or low enough or it just sounds weird in this key, uh, you know, other people will add layers. I'm not saying that's wrong, but we don't. We try to find a new sound, something that has its own space that fills up the entire spectrum of what you're trying to fill up at that time. Don't convolute it with a bunch of different sounds because that will really just hurt you in the long run. Um, um, which is really hard to do because um, like, you, you add a lot of stuff in when you're like, teaching yourself how to produce and then you have to like, take a step back and be like, less is more. Um, but let's break down the, the chords. Um, so the chords are pretty simple. Um, all right, so let's break them down sound by sound, starting with the main one. So this main one. So first of all, the brilliance of this part is in the actual chord progression itself. Um, this sounds dope, but like there's a lot of times that I've found, I've been like searching for, you know, how did they make that sound sound so warm and amazing? And it really just was an amazing chord progression with like a pretty basic sound. Um, this main sound I was working with really quickly and it's just, I took this preset in silent and it was more of like a key pattern and I just opened it up and to give you a glimpse of what it is. This preset is just, yeah, so this is just like this key icicle preset. I'll show you what it's like actually before I, I messed around with it. This is the shit that everyone wants to know, how you made those chords. So let's go. There you go. Um, I think it's in three. Key icicle. Is it key? Yeah, so I was just flicking through presets and I found this one. It doesn't sound that dope when it's on its own, you would have never guessed that, but you know, I pad those chords and I went. And so, so I know that's open. It's a little too soft, throw the sustain up. Take the release off. Take that delay off. Bring the <laughs> um, I definitely threw some EQ on. Maybe too good. Nah, it's too much high end. Nah, it's too much. I think there's a little bit more release than that. That's not exactly it, but this is what it does. That's yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. There, yeah, that sounds pretty. That's pretty close. Um, so yeah, it's basically what I did. There's a. I think I would have taken some bass out of the EQ 
on this other one. But that's the primary sound. Um, um, so those chords are already doing a lot, like. Sounds pretty basic though on its own. Um, one thing that I learned, I feel like from watching like Avicii's tutorials is um, what he does to make his stuff sound bigger is he adds like other melodies. It's not just like, you know, a bunch of different um, types of sounds. It's not like a bass sound and a chord sound doing the same thing. It's them all, them doing different things is what adds to like the, the depth and warmth and uh, what makes the sound special, so. So that's just following the following the bass line. That sounds not that necessary. It's another uh, like silent bass sound. Um, and then I have this 808 bass sound that I made in Massive. But that one goes duh, 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 duh. And that kind of adds to the depth of these songs. So when the top chords are kind of coming down, that one's going starting low, going up, and then they meet together in the middle. And I feel that that's like what makes it sound so big and gives it that awesome bounce. Um, and that's all that's on, going on here. There's this one sound here, this nexus sound. I don't even, this is like an afterthought. It's just a, it's kind of like sine wave, siren type thing that goes over the whole track. And that just kind of, it's, a, this, it's like the sound kind of happens up here and just adds to the whole like spacing of, of this part. You never hear it though. Yeah. And then remember that kickstart thing I told you about? I went a little crazy with it on this. Um, and so this has a side chain that's side chaining every quarter note. Um, a lot of side chains usually are programmed to follow the kick. This one's not. It's programmed just to follow like the downbeat of the song, um, which I think is cool because the kick pattern is still doing its own pattern and it's not hitting on every like one, two, three, four. So not hitting on every quarter note. So yeah. So it's still side chaining you when the kick's not hitting, which is cool. That's like where the, the real bounce comes from. Um, uh, there's some cool effects I did. This uh, like, uh. So, so all that is, let's see, I don't remember exactly how I did it, um, but what I usually do is this thing called resampling, which is just resampling what you did. Um, so I usually take a first note like uh, it's probably too good. That section. Let's take that. It's just for the sake of right now that we're doing this here. Let's just start over here. So that it's sitting by itself over there. So basically I'll resample. You just go here. Where are you? Um So that's just going to record what's happening right there in the song. Make sure there's nothing on your master. There is right now, but fuck it. Just for tutorial's sake, I won't mess around too much, but. So record that. All right, I'm praying that this is actually what I did because I'm going to look like an idiot if it isn't. <laughs> um, so that leaves you with this audio signal which you can manipulate in a different way um, than just the MIDI. So I think I just, I didn't just re- So that's not what I did. Um, I should have changed the, turned the side chain off. That's what, this is another trick that I do a lot of times is I'll take a sound, bounce it to audio, then reverse it, and it kind of flows back into it. Um, that's not what I did for this point. Um, I actually, took a sampler, took that audio signal, put it in here, so. So, make that a 
getting out. All right, I shouldn't have left the side chain on, but I did, so it's not gonna sound exactly how it's supposed to. Um, and I'm pretty sure I went here, changed the pitch bend to 12. And then you can edit the MIDI clip by hitting this edit button. Then you have your pitch bend automation right here. And I think I went, I did something like this. I did the pitch bend like, so basically just, I was able to bend that uh, sample down an octave is basically what that was. So I did that and then I took that sound, went back to my resample track, put it here. All right, and recorded that audio. So now I have <laughs> a resample of a sample. Um, so that gives me this sound. And then put, then I think I put that in reverse. So, yeah, that's what I did. So without the side chain, it would be like whoop and not as bouncy, but. So let's go to the actual thing in the song. And here is. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, what? Is that a whole explanation yeah. of that? <laughs> that was I like the so most much. explained part of this tutorial yeah. so far. <laughs> but that's like, those, all right, those, all right, yeah, it is ridiculous. That took forever. Um, and I know it's crazy, like, like those little things like have, it's just a, just a tiny part of the song, but to me, those are the parts that make a production really special um, and make it sound, as Justin Bieber would say, expensive when he refers to Skrillex's sounds. But like, those are the cool things that I think really add, uh, it really add character and, um, you know, there's a million of different like tricks like that you can do. That's what we used in this song, but keep that in mind for your own productions. Um, and then the only other part that I'd show you is this, uh, so all, that's the actual sample. So I just took her voice. Um, like, like I said before, all those people we do tracks with, I make them do a ton of ad lib stuff. And I remember I was like, just go, uh, uh, she's like, what is this for? And now it's such a central part of the song. Um, really recommend like doing that type of stuff. So I've used that sound like four times in this song, uh, right here being. So that's, um, let's see. That's the actual sample. So that's it's kind of hard when you're doing it on your keyboard, not an actual keyboard. But um, that's all that's going on there. Um, again, there's the Crystal Lloyd Algebra vocal plugin just to match the rest of the uh, timbre of the, of the vocals and the rest of the song. Um, so yeah, um, then there's like a little pitch bend in the middle, in the beginning of that, as you can see here. The what up? Um, so yeah, that's how I did that part. Um, that's pretty much the, the whole track. Um, that's it, right? What about the cloud falling? The, uh, is this the radio edit? Oh no. Oh, yeah, there's one other part. Does it matter? <laughs> this is my favorite part of the song. And this is probably we spent the least amount of time on this because we already had had and we had those chords and that chord pattern and I literally just copied the MIDI from that and was flicking through massive presets. And I found this is such a basic massive preset. This one, this, uh, it's called Kruthrin's Orbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oops, that's not it. Obviously it's got the side chain on it already. So I ran it through all, all the same processing that the rest of the chords are under, so it matches. Um, but I also put this, 
It's kind of this really dorky, weird sound, and I just happened to throw the chords on it, and I was like, and it makes, when I've never played it as chords, I've always thought of it as a lead sound, that's how it's categorized in the massive preset bank, but. Especially with the side chain on there, it has a sick, just like floating feel. So we kind of just let that rock right there. Um, that's not in the radio edit, unfortunately, until the end, but it has a, it has that over. But that's my favorite part of the song, and it was like the simplest thing to make. So we literally built the whole song out like that, and once we, that was like the final part. Yeah, and then except I think, for yeah, the vocal glitch. Exactly. Then yeah, that was the last thing we added on it. But then this is. And then the rest of it was more and less. Took the hook from there and flew it over to here and had took out all the sounds just at the drums. Deep in my bones, I can feel you. Take me back. And then the same build and another drop. And yeah. uh, felt like a pretty well rounded song. But anyway, teach his own. Hope you can take these tips and like use them. Um, don't stick to them. There are no rules in making music. Um, encourage everybody to like watch as many tutorials uh, as possible, but also not, you know, try out the techniques, but don't. Uh, limit yourself to, to what you've learned. Experiment, have fun, um, because I feel like every great producer has made their own rules and has their own unique sound. So um, you can look at this. I'm sure people will look at the way I made this track and be like, that's shit, you know, like that's not the right way to do things. But, you know, this is, this is my art, so fuck you. <laughs> that's a perfect ending. <laughs>